What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Corner Podcast. Kel Dansby here with the old man, Andreas Hell, the busiest man that I know currently. Dre, you are everywhere. You're just doing all this damn work, so you try to get on vacation, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm going on vacation next week, so I got to get this. I got a lot to get done taking the wife uh, out of the country for her birthday. But oh, dope! Where are you guys going? We're going to Aruba. Oh, I like it. I like it. Yep, and the first time us going somewhere without the kids. No and, kids. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Long time coming, because as soon as Kennedy got of age pandemic and yep. then the pandemic happened and then my son came <laughs> so we haven't been able to go anywhere just the two of us in eight years so this will be our first first vacation but leading up to this god damn what's a lot going on man it's uh a ton going on in combat sports right now we're gonna have an mma and a boxing show still to come later on in the week but we just have to hold off on it gervonta no showed the, I guess not the open workouts, but the grand arrivals. We've got to wait to see what the hell he says at the media day and everything else. Benavidez has the media day on Thursday. So we kind of want to see what they're going to say. Lord knows what's happening with UFC 303. You might go to Aruba, come back, turn your phone on, and all hell broke loose. Yeah, I have no idea what's about to happen. I don't <laughs> because have you do not check shit while you're on vacation. Nope. So once that know. phone goes back on, boy, just go blow up. Stop everyone's hitting you up so it's it's going to be madness over the next couple of weeks in mma and there's one hell of a card as well like they have the abu dhabi card yeah next week is abu dhabi this week there's a card um that i don't care about but i'll be at uh a bunch <laughs> of flyweights are fighting i'll be at the apex i won't be at the tank fight uh i gotta do my gotta put in my mma work over at espn so yeah I'll be watching the tank fight on my laptop while cage side at the apex. Listen, nothing wrong with that. Uh, we actually have uh, Bam Bam on the show this week as a guest, uh, Brady Highstand. So he'll be chopping her up with us this week as well. So we'll talk to him. He's the featured prelim uh, against Garrett Armfield. So he's 25, super young. Make sure you guys look out for that as well. Going to record something for Patreon. Shout out to everyone, Corner Club members. Corner Club episode two was last week. Four people on the Patreon. That's always so damn fun. So that is up and out everywhere. Process elimination, Dre. That means today is pro wrestling. Yep. Because your ass has been living in the apex. And it's not just for the UFC. You were there for NXT Battleground this past week. Yeah, I was. I got to see the apex get transformed for Battleground. And uh, yeah, we, we, we'll definitely talk about that and the outcomes. And You got to be um, honest. Just real quick health outcomes and everything so far it's better that way right like they, they should have never went back the setup for nxt is better than what they have for ufc events yeah they, they i mean just keep it that way they yeah the setup was great like it looked like it was like a sound stage it, it looked perfect um i saw people complaining there was like the crowd was not loud but the crowd was loud it's just it doesn't get really loud in there um there's a lot of space people don't see above you yeah so the, the sound travels up so you can't catch the crowd wasn't dead the crowd was into a lot of the matches especially for whatever reason the Shayna baylor basil low the low the vice match they were into that obviously the six women uh what kaz is called honey's in the bank <laughs> trade market i need yeah. merch yeah, i'll need tell merch. kaz i'll buy the merch right now we need merch but they <laughs> the crowd was into it it was a good show the line was ridiculous ridiculous like when we got there the line was wrapped about around the building i had to call uh wwe and ufc pr i was like yo come get me i'm not standing out in this heat this is crazy um a lot of talent was there uh alicia bumgarner was there obviously i don't i don't even think they showed alicia on camera jamal hill brandon moreno marab was there jamal got to do it that that segment with Shayna yeah in the pads he had a lot of fun doing that um, but it, it was great. I, I feel like the Apex can be used for as their West Coast location for NXT, right? Like full sale is cool, but you know, maybe get it out of the sale. same vibes. Yeah, yeah. Like it's full sale West. Yeah, like full sale's been what it has been for a long time. Um, and I know like the nuts and bolts behind like why full sale is what it is, 
but it wouldn't hurt them to do shows out of the apex every now and then. Now, I know some people said, well, yeah, they could fill up like a 5,000 person venue for, you know, their, their, the PLEs. And while true, I think they really wanted to test this one out because if you looked at the card while it was good, it wasn't like, I think they would run the risk of not selling 5,000 tickets with Trick yeah. Williams versus, you know, uh, all ego Ethan page in the main event. Never know. So running it at, at the apex, I think was smart. I think it was a great test run. I think it was an opportunity for them to see what it looks like in there. Dane has obviously made it very clear that the UFC is trying to move out of the apex for these fight night cards. And if anybody has noticed, like the last three fight nights that have been on the road have been breaking records when whatever city they're in. Yep. So clearly it's time to get back on the road. The apex was great for what it was. I feel, still think it's good for cards like this weekend's card. Yep. Like you don't need to put that in an arena. You can put that in the apex. Keep people Once busy. a month. Maybe twice yeah. a month. These smaller cards are good for that. Like a lot of people don't know, like the Apex, like I've toured the facility in terms of like production. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect like event where nobody's really got to go anywhere. The locker rooms are right there. Your production stage is right there. It's got tons of cameras. The lighting's perfect. It's great for smaller scale shows. Um, obviously, they overcharge a lot of these fans, but they pay it. to. It was go like 200 a ticket. Shit, it's higher than that. What? Some of those tickets are like a, a G just to sit there Shit. for these relatively lousy cards. Like that don't really mean anything, but people will pay it. Um, all that being said, I thought, I mean, you know, I'm a little biased because it's a home game for me, but being at the apex for battleground, I think it, it was cool to see. It was cool to see where they transformed it into. And they, I think they could do more with it uh, moving forward in terms of, you know, more NXT shows, you got to figure they'll probably utilize it for WrestleMania week at some point to take yeah. a few things, film a few things, whatever. NXT would be cool in there. Yeah. NXT would be good. So I could see this, you know, this, this was a, a real test run. I thought it worked out well. No, I, you know, I agree. It looked great. The production aspects, like you mentioned, are great. Everything is in house. They have the full, like the boards, everything like is up in the rafters, which is why the sound doesn't travel. Everything's so self-contained. Um, and if anyone watched UFC and like these fight nights, you hear everything in the octagon. Yeah. But you really don't hear stuff outside of it. Not that the crowd is very loud or big, but it's the same thing. Like you hear everything in the ring for NXT. And that's where everything kind of gets funneled to. Anything from the crowd really never makes it down. It's just how, you know, it's, it's built. But I, again, I thought it was one hell of a try. If anything, TKO, because as much as we can nitpick and everything, which is deserved most times, got to give them credit when they do something cool. They're trying new shit. Yeah. Like for, for both companies. They're just, they didn't buy something. It was like, well, we're just going to inherit what they have and they do numbers and we're just going to collect a check. Yeah. They're actively trying. They're cross-promoting. They're doing a lot of stuff and trying to grow it. It's smart. I mean, you know, they, they're they starting to slowly figure out how to integrate these two companies in ways that don't seem extremely forced. Um, and it's smart, like, as, as a live events company, as a touring company, as, you know, putting all these live events for WWE and the UFC, they're doing a lot of things, right things, and they're making money hand over fist. Like, they are doing extremely well. A lot of that credit for the WWE goes to how Cody Rhodes has carried himself as champion. The UFC is just, they continue to say what you want about them, but they put on live events damn near every week yep. that people watch out of habit, not even necessarily because they're good shows. It's like There's not even great fights. People just watch the shit out of habit. Just kind of like most of us pro wrestling fans watch Raw out of habit. Yeah. It can be terrible, but we still watch it. So they've created an institution where people just will keep coming back. And they found ways that the production has always been great for both companies. The when they do it big, can't really compete with either company. Like when they when they get a big, big event, they do it right. But yeah, yeah they, for all the bad, there is some good there. Definitely. Talking about the card itself. We had the honeys in the bank match, which it was only 12 minutes, but they went out and, you know, always get a little sketchy. With the when the women are green and you throw them into a ladder match, yeah, yeah. They, but Soul they, they, stole the show, didn't have did. to win, because 
It's weird, but she's above this. Yeah, like I saw a lot of people that wanted uh, Sol Ruka to win, and I was like, it's too obvious if she wins, right? Yeah. It's too obvious, and it, to me, it came down to Kalani Jordan and Jada Parker. I feel like those are the only two people that should win this match, given that like, I didn't think Lash Legend should win. I like Lash. She's been in the storyline. It could have do, been, but both of them could have been champs. Like Trick would have been so proud and would it advance like their story. Yeah, the problem with it's not even a problem with Lash is that she doesn't need a belt because she's kind of tied with Trick. And, you know, like the and metaphor and like it, I wouldn't have been mad at it. But I think Kalani Jordan was the right pick because you want to establish her as like this underdog champion. It's a fun story to tell as long as she continues to develop. Um and, you know, people are like, it's Carmelo Hayes' girl. Yeah, it is. Uh, but everybody worked their ass off in this match. I, thought, I didn't know they were together. Oh, shit. Yeah, they post on social media all the time. Oh, everybody dates everybody. It's hard to keep. Yeah. Um, the one thing I don't know if people saw, like, the way the apex was set up, the distance between the guardrail and the ring was, like, six feet. They had, like, no room to operate. And I was sitting with Adrian Hernandez, uh, and he, we – he, he kind of pointed it out and I was like, oh, the margin for error is like wild small. Like if you do a, a dive, a tope and hit that guardrail, it's a wrap, right? Like there was no, there was no margin for error, but I thought the women did well. I was um, wondering, is that why they threw Lash when they threw her over the rope? They threw her like sideways. Yeah, there, there's no room. Like yeah. there was no room like, and Lash is big. You know what you, I'm saying? Yeah, She's usually, you know, you throw someone kind of like, so their whole back is on the ladder, the ladder yeah. snaps. But yeah, maybe she didn't have enough room, so they threw her completely sideways, and she hit the ladder and just kind of flopped off. Yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of room for them to operate, but I think the the women made it work. Uh, the NXT women's division, there's a story to tell about how this division has been rehabbed. Mm. Just NXT in general, how it's been rehabbed since NXT 2.0 and Vince getting the fuck on out of here, and now what Shawn Michaels is doing. Like the women are like, let me see. Maybe about a year and a half ago. I'm trying to think how long how long it's been since I, I was just trashing that show every week. It was completely unwatchable. It was about a year and a half, two years ago. And it was it was the storylines were bad, the booking was bad. But was really concerning, and I, I talked to like other wrestlers about this was how green the talent was and the things they were doing that damn near killed themselves. Yeah. And it was like showing no advancement, you know, in, in ring like they weren't protecting each other. Now they're protecting each other. Like the strides that Jada Parker has made, the strides that Lash, Lash Legend was green as hell and she was part of NXT 2.0. Yep. She, she looks better. Now she's not a finished product. None of these women are. But Sean has done a great job. Like whoever the agents are, whoever they're, they're working with these women, these women are progressive. They don't have indie experience. They're just coming in, putting in work. Like Mi Chin, Mia Yim was like the, the general because she was the veteran in the ring that night. And other than that, these are a bunch of former athletes and, and you know, track, basketball, volleyball. Meechin, Mia, Meechin is having a great run down there, too. She like, she, she's allowed to be herself. She's allowed to have good matches. She doesn't need to win all the time, but she did win, like we just saw on Tuesday. Like, they give her enough wins. It's, it's a lot like Corbin. Yeah. It's like, yo, yeah. like, go down here and just do your thing. And they brought the good brothers down. Like, yeah. it's, it's a place where... What? Why would you sit in catering? I feel like that's their thing. Yo, do you want to sit in catering? Because we gonna pay you. But do you just want to wrestle a little bit? Because we can use the help down here. And they're like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. They still get some TV time. It gives me something to do, and it it doesn't hurt any talent that goes down. And I think she's really you know big on that. Um, so Ruka definitely has to go into that main event picture soon though. It's, you would think sooner than time. later. That think, finisher is as good as anything I've seen since. It's, it's tremendous. The clips. The, I think with Sol Ruka, I don't think you rush her into the title picture. I think you just get her through some feuds, right? Work on her mic work. Um, you know, work with different talent, different styles. So when you do get in that title picture, you're ready. There's there's really no rush. Roxanne Perez has been great as champion. Like the heel run for her has been great. Um. But I figure they can hold off on Soruka. Like, I don't know how long you hold off on her. I don't know if you hold off all the way until next WrestleMania. I don't know how. how not that you, far away now. It's Six not. months. Like, WrestleMania season is six months away. Yeah. So it's like you could go that direction by then. 
Um, but we, we'll have to wait and see. They, they, the women's division is just loaded, loaded with with talent and with potential. Women. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, through man. the roof. It reminds me at a lower level because they're they're not like that crazy yet. But it reminds me of stardom. Yeah, where stardom close. no but like stardom can like lose talent and stardom will have people and granted we're in the u.s but they'll have wrestlers come in where you're like who the fuck is this yeah and be like but by the time they leave stardom or spend a year and a half there it's like oh they're so fucking good like the the promotion is just so good at bringing these women in and developing them that it's like a machine yeah. mariah may is like a, a great case of that like where she came to AEW. Was like, oh, she has a look. No one questions if she can wrestle. No, no one. they know. Anybody like, who works stardom knows how to work. That's it. And like NXT is getting the women's division getting into that. Like where it's like you don't have to have previous experience, but as you go through here, we're gonna make you a pretty damn good wrestler. Yeah. So that's it's nice to see in that match. Then we had the tag team championship match. Um, Nathan Frazier and Axiom beat the OC Gallows and Anderson, which is cool. Gallows and Anderson now are back with AJ and they have their own thing going on on the main roster. But it was like, yo, like we need two established guys to wrestle. And the tag team division is still frighteningly thin in NXT. So they're like, please, like, can you just, can you come down here? And, you know, we'll just work a good match. The match was cool. It was just one of those things where the women's division's in good hands. Um, and they just signed like five more women that were in the crowd. And on a telecast, cool. The men's division, cool. And you're getting guys like we'll talk about Ethan Page. And um, there's there's people coming over, not a ton, but enough to build up. People come down. Let's focus on the tag division. Spend like a year. Go out and get some tag teams. AW took a lot of them, but there, there got to be some other young ones. I think. I mean, yeah, they could always do better with their tag division. Um. Speaking of Gallows and Anderson, this is probably one of the better matches that they've worked in terms of like looking inspired to work in like a year, right? And I figure a lot of that has to do with them kind of just toiling in obscurity since they've come back to WWE. They're like they're not doing anything. Oh. AJ was hurt very quick too. Yeah, AJ was throw hurt. Him off. But they they didn't really do anything with these two. Like ever since Gallows, Gallows and Anderson showed up on the scene, they haven't really had like a great run like ftr was good enough they got out of the company they just bet on themselves and went to AEW. the gals and anderson have struggled so this was the first time i saw them looking inspired to put in work in quite some time and more importantly like little things like carl uh carl anderson taking a uh Sp a super spanish fly <laughs> of, like that stuff he doesn't really do so it was yeah. like it, it felt like they were just happy to wrestle the the wind didn't matter Nate, nathan fraser and axiom they're fine, but they they really got to figure out this tag division because, like, there's no depth. It, it's not a lot there, but you yeah. have like a few younger tag teams. Like they're there, but the they got moved up too it. fast. The well, the Creeds moved up, and it wasn't like I didn't expect them to win the tag titles. But it's like, can we just hurry and put them up with Gable? Like, can yeah. we get to that? I think they're slow playing that, and we're getting there. But you didn't have to take him out of NXT to do that, no. right? They could have arrived as Gable's replacement for, yeah. you know, for Team Alpha. And they like, could have yeah. arrived as tag team champions. that would have gave him a little prestige. Yeah. They brought like, the belts up, then dropped them. Like. But it's fine. Whatever. It's just the, the, the NXT tag division, they need some help. That's Yeah, that's the next order for Sean to fix. Um, then you mentioned Lola Vice, Shayna Baszler. These matches aren't easy to do. You say this shit all the time. And it, like, yeah. They are rarely done well. They always maybe, look bad. Maybe one out of ten. They it's hard of to do a fake real fight, right? Yeah. Like, let's do a fake real fight. And and this shit was giving me raw underground for a quick second. Like when yeah. like the presentation. And I was yeah. like, fuck. But you know what? They did okay with it. It was like it was fine. It wasn't offensive. Like, at the end of the day, it was. <laughs> it just wasn't like, offense. Don't don't offend me with this match. Because they're two real MMA fighters, which is, right. is the key. And Shayna had to do that shitty MMA fight with Ronda on her way out, and oh. that didn't turn out well. <laughs> that so, was offensive. Yeah. So Lola, who is met her family, like her family wasn't fit, sitting too far from me. Um, like they all came. They all were wearing T-shirts. Her sister, who just had her first MMA fight recently, was there. Like. They all pulled up for Lola and or Valerie for the MMA fans out there. But 
she I thought they they did the best they could with this match. They clearly have something with Lola. Like it's very obvious they got something with her. She's over. But like Rover. There she's a little rough around the edges, like a lot of these women. Um, and they ran that little test run when they threw her into the the the, the match with Roxanne Perez. And, yeah. And they were like, ah, she's not ready yet. Pulled her back. Had her do this little run with Shayna, try to establish her as a firm heel. Um, I think they're they're in a good place with her. Shayna Baszler, strangely enough, like if you go back and listen to the old episodes of this podcast, I got tired of her NXT run because I just felt like it just wasn't exciting anymore. And by the time she got to the main roster, I felt her style had evolved. And she's now I look at her as one of the most underutilized women on the roster because she's totally different I'm glad than you most said of these that. women. Like, um, I, I'm surprised that she's not booked to do more. Like, they never revisited the Bianca feud. And that drove no. me nuts. Um, Trips obviously knows her history there. Uh, Sean bringing her down to NXT. Everyone's aware of what she's accomplished in NXT. Time has passed her, though. Unfortunately, there's too many signings and too many people elevated to give her the spot she probably deserves again. I'm glad you mentioned this because if there's a name right after Ricochet that should probably, when the contract is up, test out AEW, it's probably Shayna Baszler. She's and and it's no fault of her own. No, and she's great. It's just WWE got a little bit too crowded around her, and it's yeah. hard to bring her back into that picture. And Ronda being in and out and then tying her too closely to Ronda and. It, towards the end of McMahon, kind of fucked her up anyway. Like that tag team and the makeup, like it, it slowed her down exponentially. So I think a fresh start in AEW would do wonders for her. And that's a promotion that really needs her. Um, yeah. They still need a lot in the women's division. But I, I think you mentioned no one's like her. There's still no one like her in AEW. No, I mean, there's nobody. Like Shayna Baszler's in this weird spot. in. Later on the show, you guys, listen, we're going to talk more about this whole Ricochet situation. And I'm going to give my take because I've seen like wild theories flying around on social media and some of y'all just dumb. Um, but I'll make sense out of a lot of this in, in a little bit. But Shayna, the problem with people like Shayna, it's really hard to rehab yourself after Vince gets a hold of you and fucks you up. Right. Shayna came in, nerfed everybody in the Elimination Chamber to get a shot at Becky Lynch. And then did that goofy vampire gimmick where she bit her to the blood. And then it was over. Like, she was cooked. There was nothing she could do to rebound from that. Because she's a decent promo. She's not, like, a, a, a tremendous promo. But as you mentioned, then Ronda came along, and then she was tied to Ronda. And it was just, she's a victim of circumstance where they just didn't really have any plans for her. And it's, it's wild because I look at Shayna, and I'm like, this woman should be working. She, like she should be working, she doesn't even have to win. I'm surprised she never got her hands on gold. Yeah, at this point, but it is what it is. I I don't know if AEW is the answer. Um, she's obviously in this tag match this weekend with Zoe Stark. Uh, but letting getting her just get her back to working. Like she she's one of the more unique talents on the ro roster that truly is different from anybody else. And working style and everything else. The only other person that came close in AEW is like Marina Shafir, who's no longer... She's she ROH. ROH, now. ROH. I don't know what ROH is. I just watched one of her matches this weekend because uh, I guess ROH posted it in full on YouTube. Someone shared it on Twitter. It's a good fucking match. She finished it uh, instead of like, the you know, Joe's Kalina Clutch and like you get wrapped in and like how he kind of wrangles you on the ground. She's like changed it. So it looks like the opponent's face, the opponent is facing her and it looks like she's giving her a hug and she chokes them out and like strokes their hair. It's a very cool submission finish. Um, it looked great. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, that's something. Like, that's a cool, like, creepy angle. Kind of like a Dexter Loomis when he was stroking people, people there or face as he put him to sleep. It's like a cool thing, but I don't, I don't. Well, we'll see um, if they use her. I don't know what the hell ROH is anyway. That's That's a whole different podcast. And then Obafemi versus Wes Lee and Joe Coffey. I said, fam, he ain't going nowhere anytime soon. They got something special. Obafemi is uh. So I'm sitting with UFC PR during this match. 
uh, Miguel, um, one of the other newer women, Chuck from WWE sitting with me. Oba comes out and the look. So, so like some MMA writers were there too, just to take it in. The look on people's faces when Oba came out, they was like, what is that? Like he's <laughs> huge. Yep. Uh, can't remember who asked. He was like, how, how old is he? I was like, yo, he's 26. Like, this is ridiculous. But then he starts working. And the things that he does in the ring, it's like, obviously, the spot with Wesley on the turnbuckle. Like, it's just ridiculous how strong this man is. Yep. And no, he doesn't need to go to the main roster. Don't rush him because he's still green. But, like, he's still – but, man, talk about it. Just a monster. Just like a – He has controlled athleticism. It's cr- it's crazy how he controls his strength. Like he looks like he could th- he could have threw Wesley at any point, like into the crowd, in through the ceiling, like whatever he wanted to do. But everything was done like pretty precisely. Uh, I, this was a good match. I know a lot of people wanted to see Wesley win. I don't. I, Not like, yet. I, no, that's why Coffee's in this match. Yeah, somebody got to eat the pin. Yep. And Gallus had to interfere, of course. And it's just Obafemi is. I don't see any reason to take this title off him anytime soon. I, yeah. I really don't. Like, I, I really, like, it's one of those situations similar to, like, the Adam Coles and the Johnny Gargano's. Like, this is, to hold this title for a while, and the next step is the main title. Agreed. Just established, though. Because he's, he's, he's a savage. Reminds me of Jade when she held the AEW title. It's like, that's a good title. You know, while you're yeah. green and everything, hold it and run through people and even veteran talent. And then pull the trigger when it's time to pull the trigger. AEW never pulled the trigger because she left. But that's not to fault of their own. They understood where to place her and let her have a run. And I have the same thing with Obafemi. It's just, it's very 90s booking with him. Yeah. Like someone on Twitter was like, it's refreshing to not see 300 pounders do a bunch of dives and high spots. No, and I was like, you know what? They're trying to throw shade. I get it. That was like a jab at AW. So whatever. And I still like that shit. Samoa Joe is one of your favorites. You like that shit. But this is, it's good for a different presentation of a big guy. Because really, if they wanted to teach him that shit, he could probably learn it. He's that athletic. But they're booking him like a big guy usually was booked in the 90s. And it's all power spots, controlled rage. Like, yeah, you can use that athleticism, but in spurts, Everything is methodical and planned out. No wasted movements. Um, yeah, just having that wealth of knowledge around every day has to just... It, it's back to being that asset that the company needed. Yeah, Where you I, have Sean Booker, even though Booker's horrendous on commentary, his mind, you know, and still what he was able to accomplish as a pro wrestler and him and his school, obviously, Roxanne Perez, who we'll talk about next. But he has a good wrestling mind. And then all the trainers and coaches there, it's it's the best thing a young wrestler can do. And they're back to wrestling. There's a lot to be said about understanding, like, what's missing, right? And AEW is the wrestling show, right, where everybody does crazy finishers, crazy spots, crazy work. But sometimes you just need somebody to just throw people around. That's what Obafemi is. And this was similar to what Braun Strowman was when he got brought up to the main roster, right? Yeah. Just nerfing people. And I think there's something there. They Like, they neutered Braun Strowman because at a certain point, it's the big show theory. Like, once you beat yeah. him, you can always beat him. But, Obafemi is a better wrestler than Braun Strowman. Already, he is. By the way. But every Obafemi match has now become a, well, what kind of extraordinary feat of strength is he going to pull off today? And that's all you wait for because I stand and deliver. They had the spot with like the Tower of Doom, and he's like carrying these fools to the middle of the ring. Yeah. Like he's, they've got something with him, and there's no reason at all to rush him up anywhere. NXT is a good in a good place right now, which is bad for like other wrestlers looking to come to NXT. But they're in a good place right now where the talent doesn't need to go anywhere anytime soon. Like no. they can work with this roster of people for the next two years if they wanted to. Granted, it'll probably be the next twelve months. A couple may move up here and there. But there is no expedited pipeline like the Kevin Owens is of the world. It's like, yeah. you're like too good for this at some point. You got to go to the main roster. They don't need to do that anymore. Develop people like Obafemi, take your time. And NXT is, is an established brand because you are investing in this talent to blossom over in, and not in like 
some weird time constraint. We got to get him out of here in six months. Now you got time. Work with him. Yeah, no, definitely. And then uh, Roxanne Perez, Jordan Grace. Missed opportunity. You want Jordan Grace to win? Yes, this was a missed opportunity to me. If they would have run it back, because I believe this weekend is also the impact or the TNA paper. Yes. If they would have run it back, I would agree with you. Well, my, my, so here's my thing, right? I, I understand why Roxanne Perez won, but, and I know, and, and we knew it was going to be some bullshit. Our good friend Dana Brooks so was running shenanigans. out. Ash Bile against so stupid. Like, why are you even here? Right? Like, that commentary is like, that's dead. Wait, Ash by elegance. That's a good touch. It, yeah, but it was so, it was just, it was a silly thing because you had to find a way for Jordan Grace to lose. Yeah. But my thing is, if Jordan Grace would have won the title and then you pull these shenanigans on Friday, right, to get it back, I think you get more eyeballs on the TNA product. Oh, you yeah. get. And you get Roxanne Perez to who was, you know, a former Ring of Honor talent. You get a lot of eyeballs like on her working there in that. Like, I think everybody wins if Jordan Grace wins and then drops to try to write back or not. Even if she doesn't drop it right back, maybe the next pay-per-view. I think look, that, that would have been how you get to a world's collide pay-per-view. It, I think you you. The fact that they're working with Jordan Grace is already saying something, right? Like Gail Kim was there, Jonathan Gresham was there, uh, Kenny King was there. Like a lot of TNA talent was backstage, and I saw them all. Uh, CM Punk was also there, which people didn't see. He was on uh, camera. Was he? I didn't. Him and Roxanne did a a post, like a, a digital exclusive thing after she oh, won. She calls okay. him a hypocrite, walks away. And he's like, what the hell is wrong with her? <laughs> and then walks away. Yeah, I, I was actually like, so I'm talking to everybody. This is just a sidebar. I'm talking to everybody on the way out. Earlier in the night, I, Kenny King was under the hard cam. And I was like, I'm going to come over and holler at you. And I never made it over there. So I'm walking out and it's late. And I'm going to my car. And Kenny, suited up, pulls up. What up? And I'm like, yo, what up? And Punk just is like right next to him, like appeared out of thin air. And Punk is walking like on a mission to not be noticed, right? So I didn't even stop him to say, I'm like, yo, what up? And I was like, yo, Kenny, what are you doing? He's like, man, I'm just, he's like, I'm Punk's driving service. He's like cracking jokes and shit. And they're like, they are smashing. Like these two are mobbing to not be seen. And I was like, damn. Because if, if anybody saw Punk, they would have lost their goddamn mind. But he had snuck out the back door. But everybody came out to watch this match. Like everybody was like under hard cam from wherever Gorilla was. I don't even know exactly where it was. But everybody was looking at this match. And I think it was a good match. It wasn't a great match. I think they left something on the bone. And I get it. Like, you don't want your, your talent to lose, but who cares? I just really feel like if Jordan Grace would have won and you could have pulled this bullshit shenanigans the following week and then reestablished Jordan Grace as the, the knockout champion and whoever interfered, because I they're really determined to do this Ash by L against Jordan Grace view, which I think is awful. I just think Dana Brooke is awful. I'm sorry, guys. I just you're never gonna get over that. <laughs> I think she's terrible. She's never improved. Like, I don't know if she's a good person or not, but it, like that doesn't matter to me. Like when I watch her work, it just never seems like all these other women have gotten so much better than her over the years. And she doesn't bring anything to the table. But regardless, Jordan could have won, they could have ran this back if they would have loaned uh, Roxanne Perez out. And I thought it would have been great. I thought it would, I thought it would have been a great thing to, to really bring these worlds together. Nevertheless, Roxanne Perez wins. And I guess Jordan Grace is done with her little NXT run. Um, well, I don't yeah. know. I don't know how long her contract is with TNA, but it, at some point you got to look at this woman. Cause it's, she's, she's obvious. She's main roster bound when she comes yeah. over, but TNA is like, Honestly, we they know that too. And they're just like, fuck it, at least we get some eyeballs yeah. on us before she bounces. But that being said, I think we're going to see more of TNA here in just a week because Cody was on on Tuesday. So there's 25-man battle royal, which I think is taking over half the show of NXT um, to determine the number one contender. And he says probably some people from other locker rooms as well. So I expect main roster people to come down and I expect to see a couple of surprises from TNA come over. So it's kind of like a whole summer thing. It's just funny that it coincides exactly with the time as Forbidden Door. 
<laughs> like yeah, yeah. it was just like, oh, you guys want to bring people over? We could do it too. Yeah. And Cody being there and dropping the you guys look like you're in a good place line with all that at former AEW guys. Like, all right, they're taking jabs as well. So neither company can help themselves. Yep. And then main event, Trick Williams and Ethan Page. This is fine. Like, I don't have anything bad to say about it, but I don't have anything yeah. great about it to say about it either. Um, it's the best ma- match I've seen from Ethan Page and God knows how long. I mean, the man hasn't really worked. It's the problem with Ethan Page is they really did him no favors m- booking this so quickly. Yeah. Right? Like, he shows up, he arrives. Some of the crowd knows who he is. Some of the crowd's like, who the fuck is that guy? It's not like he came in on fire leaving AEW. So it was... That theme you, song doesn't help either. Not great. Um, Ethan Page is a very talented wrestler who I think knows how to draw natural heat. There's a lot of things I think he could do really well. Um, but it, it was like they they booked this, and I don't know where you go with Ethan Page from here. I really don't. That's always your thing when someone gets booked into a title thing. There's only yeah. one way to go. I don't, I, don't I, know. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine, but I don't know what the plan for him is. Because now... It's me. metaphor. Him versus metaphor. But they they keep beating his ass every week. But what is he beat them up? But it's so weird because what is metaphor, right? Like Noam Dar versus Ethan Page. What does that do for anybody, right? Who's the heel? Because metaphor is, is the heel group, right? I'm kind I'm of. not I'm not entirely sure what what they're doing. Um, Trick is very over, right? There is Trick, sexy red, the whole presentation. Uh... You aren't a fan of Sexy Red and the twerking? No, you Sexy Red and Op. Like, I swear to God, man. Like, no one can how explain she how she got here and then how she's lasted so long. I can't figure it out. The music is bad. Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. And then, like, when she's doing, like, half the crowd knew her, half the crowd didn't. And then she starts twerking. And I thought that it was funny when she was backstage twerking. Uh, with, with Sean? No, not that one. That was funny, too. But there was an interview segment with... Lola. Yes, with Lola and what's the, what's the interviewer's name? Kathy. Yeah, and, and they I thought that was her to twerk. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, but I think I don't know, man. It's it's your most old man take in a while, Dre. <laughs> it's, it's just I'm. It just it doesn't translate well on TV, right? Because he said like, I'm not saying the project the the product is not PG or whatever anymore. But every time she shows up, she's shaking ass, right? And uh, it's like. Kind of what she does. It is. It just feels weird tied to the brand, but whatever. Trick Williams, on the other hand, I keep saying this. Like, they have something really special with this guy. Like, he's charismatic. He's got the look. Um, he's a great interview. Like, I've seen all – I watched all the interviews that he had done throughout the uh, the build to this match. He's got everything. He's just got to work on his in-ring. That's yeah. it. And the in-ring is – Solid. And I said, when he won the title, I was like, this is going to be tough because he's as good as whoever he's in the ring with. Well, that's why they brought in Ethan Page, right? Like you need a veteran to work with. And Ethan Page is a veteran. Yep. And even still, I was like, eh, that match is fine. I don't know how long it's going to take for Trick to really take off, but they have time because when Trick finally, when it all clicks, because every time I see him, he's getting better. Yeah. Once it does click and he goes in the main roster, like this, that dude is a star. That dude has WWE champion written all over. Yeah, like he he really does. From a a looks like department, like he could walk through the airport and he'd be like, "Oh, who the fuck is that guy?" Again, he's charismatic. He's funny. He's great on the mic. He's over his shit. This is the most black main event talent I've ever seen this company develop, and that's no disrespect to Kofi E. Like, they were in two kind of different generations, to be fair. They just found each other, and it was different. Um, but E, when he came through, you're like, oh, that's black main event talent. You know, yeah. like, that that's a guy who could be heavyweight champ. They've gone three in a row. Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, Obafemi. In three years, if all three held one of the two main titles, you'd be like, yeah, that sounds about right. And two of them have held NXT gold. Like, it, it's one of those things where we're really seeing an influx, and maybe that's like that college NIL deal 
type shit because a lot of those college athletes are black people and black men. Like it's just yeah. college athletic is dominated by a lot of black athletes. And WWE is like, well, let's join this party. Because yeah. every every other sports kind of understood this. So let's let's get on board. And all three are different, which is which is great. To me, they're all three many event talents, all three looks, presentation, build, all three are different. And it's like, wow, we can say that about three black championship caliber guys. Yeah, they they they've got again, they got something special with them. Yeah. Um Tons just of black letting... women. There's just a lot of blackness in NXT. There just is in general. <laughs> I mean, look, and you guys are gonna listen to our Patreon episode. We're gonna talk about this Caitlin Clark situation. The nature of the beast are black women run sports, right? Like collegiate athletics. Um, they just do, right? So when a white woman shows up like Caitlin Clark, which we'll talk about again, if you haven't subscribed to Patreon, I don't know what y'all doing. Um, when a white woman shows up, it's like <gasps> Oh my God, because yeah. white women are so dominant in every field, track, everything, like except for like volleyball, like everything else we're dominating at. So, and I think like the captain this year of women's volleyball is also black. She went to Stanford. So, if you're recruiting collegiate athletes for your brand, you, you got to have black women because there's nowhere else to go. Like, that's what you're going to get. And you're going to get these fit bills. You're going to get these gymnast you're gonna get the kalani jordans you're gonna get the jada parkers like you're going to get these women same thing with the men right uh i think you're gonna get more black women than you are like you'll get a mixture of men but trick comes from that school of like oh just tremendous athlete let's see if we like the true test for this particular recruiting class of the last couple of years was bianca belair yeah they took bianca a, a, a athlete, like an absolute athlete. And shout out to Mark Henry, because he's the one that found her and was like, yeah, if we like clean this up, she's going to be a star. I don't know what Vince thought. I don't know what anybody thought. But Bianca Belair became like one of the mo the best talents that they've ever had in the women's division. Yeah. Off of strictly pure athleticism. From that point on, it's like, all right, let's just bring these women. Because once they figure it out, they're good. They're physical. They're strong. They're athletic. Now we just got to teach them how to wrestle. And talk a little bit. Yeah, we get the Dana Brooks out of here. Yeah. The bodybuilder types that, you know, do fashion and fit shows and shit like that. No, you get athletes that know yeah. how to work. That's and in mean. this class, like, they, again, they get they have some bodybuilder, but I think she's Bianca-ish, where it's, like, CrossFit, right? Yeah. Like, it's more transitional to, like, what you need. Um, by the way, U.S. Women's Volleyball captain and best player is also Black Jordan Thompson. Yeah, there you go. Just looks it up. So dominating. That, yeah, that's you know, black black women there too. Yep. Um, we'll switch over real quick. I guess before we just go through this card to end the show, we gotta talk about well, my guy is AW bound. More than damn it, Dre. I'm rooting for him wherever he goes. Of course, uh, you are. Of course I am. If he ends up in New Japan with the title on him tomorrow. If he goes at AEW, I think he fits. I'm not sure he'll be the guy in AEW, but I am positive he won't be the guy in WWE. So what's the harm? Well, all right. So start with this. The grass is not green. So all you guys on Twitter that look at certain talent, was like, they'd be better off in AEW or they'd be better off in WWE. It doesn't always work like that, right? Both rosters are immensely packed with talent yeah it's it's ridiculous right and to the point where if you're making a suggestion for somebody to go from one company to another my question is always well where do they fit yeah right we talked about this malachi black I'm like well, where, where does he fit where do you put him because the wwe is pretty established in their pecking order right now and their title scene has been dominated by roman reigns and then seth rollins and now damian priest and now Which Cody he just kind of slid in there, but not really because the Judgment Day dominated television for two years. But that's been your title picture. Yep. Your IC title picture has been dominated by Gunther, right? Now Logan Paul is your U.S. title, which means there's not very many spots for title programs and champions because these stories are told in a longer format for the most part. Yeah. So if you want a talent to go to another company, you better not be have them going there with the expectation that they're going to be in a title program. Because 
I'll be damned if anybody gets a title shot coming from another company before LA Knight. Yeah. Right? In terms of facts. people being over. So it's there is some there's a ceiling for a lot of the talent wherever they go because WWE's pretty established. Somebody like Cody Rhodes came in and fit because yeah. he was tailor made for this company. Then we have if a guy he, like Braun Breaker who's going to jump a lot of people that we thought may be waiting in line. They, I mean, they took the, they cut him loose as a heel. Like he's a, a monster. He's a savage. They're the, the ceiling sky high for Braun Breaker. Yep. Talent like Ricochet was always going to be in a tough spot. Not a great talker, tremendous athleticism, but not really a WWE style, no. more of an indie style. And he's held a lot of mid card titles, tag team titles. He, he got a max out on what he could do. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't, he was never going to be the guy. It just, he would never was. He was going to be a fun wrestler to watch, but that was about it. Yeah. But in the case of Ricochet, AEW is the place for him to go. Like he is the one talent that if you send him to AEW, he doesn't have to be in the main event picture immediately. You salivate over the matchups, every single one of them. That's for everyone. But I, I thought the same no. thing when they got like, it, it's different because Pack, Ricochet, like, no, 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 no. Ricochet is, Ricochet is different from, like, he is the foundation of, like, the Will Ospreay style, right? Yeah. In terms of sheer athleticism, I like Pac. He's not close to what Ricochet can do in the ring, yeah. right? He, he's just not. He's really good, don't get me wrong, but there's a difference here. Like, there's a distinct difference in the, the things that Ricochet can do versus anybody not named Will Ospreay in that roster. From his PWG days to his Dragon Gate days to New Prince Japan. Like, like every time he shows up, if the focus is wrestling, he's going to find a way to steal the show. He's yeah. going to find a way to go viral. So you stick him in AEW. This is a new guy for everybody to work with on a different level, right? Like we've never worked with somebody this athletic. Because when you looked at him in NXT, the match with Adam Cole, when Adam Cole hit him with a super kick on the, on, like, there's not very uni cooperation for that shit to happen. And Ricochet yep. has that. Other wrestlers do not. Not only that, you send Ricochet to AEW, the story writes itself. He gets there. If there's a 90 day no compete, even though this whole no compete thing has been taken to the Supreme Court, if, if it takes him 90 days to join AEW, that means he joins AEW in the fall, right? Yeah. And which I don't think so. They just let his contract expire. They're still a no compete, right? I think those are illegal because they have they have they have a right to resign first, and if you decline, then you're in a no compete. But Supreme Court rules have now said there's not going to be a lot of no competes for freelancers. Yeah, which is what talent is. Yeah. Nevertheless, if Ricochet shows up, let's just say he shows up in October, he works. You know what the story is. You know what you're building to. Tim Ospre Will Ospreay, Will Ospreay in, in, in Wembley. That's what you're building to. The match that broke the internet, the match that everybody's talking about, now you have them in two different stages of their career, and they have a match with some stakes now, just not just the art of wrestling, but whatever it is, title, I don't know. But this is where Ricochet's ceiling is a lot higher in AEW than it ever was in WWE. Yeah. He's, the, he's the perfect candidate to go to AEW. His, his floor isn't as low. He's not, he's not no. going to be 24-7 chasing champion. He's not going to be speed champion, um, which speed doesn't bother me as much as the other people. It's like, yo, they're just collecting a check. Like, people put way more credence into that than, than need be. It's like, yo, they're asking people who are under contract to wrestle for three minutes so that they can get some money from Twitter. Like, it's, it's not that crazy. Um, but, yeah, so it's one of those things where his floor is going to be higher. They're never going to, like, He's not going to slip that far down their roster. And he could be mid-card champion here and there. He could be a guy who's hold, held champions in four major companies. You count Lucha Underground. Like, there's a lot of shit where it's just a bunch of new challenges. For him. It, it, again, he just, he fits. Yeah. Whereas somebody like Andrade, who I said, I was like, I don't know what he's so excited to go back there for. There's really he'll, nothing for him to do. He'll figure it out. I, I think Sam, there's a Sami Zayn interview that's great. Where someone was like, "Oh, do you think you'll be like champion? This you're, you won the IC title. Do you think it's preparing you to be champion and finally like finish your story?" And he was like, "Honestly, like I don't, I don't think so." He was like, "I had a better chance under Vince McMahon." 
And he was like, because you come in one day and you'll have plans for six months and that show will be torn up. And he may just be like, put the belt on this kid. And he was like, you could be champion tomorrow. Like there was no logical plan to things sometimes. Um, there was spontaneity. He was like, with Triple H, he has stuff booked out six months, a year. Like there's long-term storytelling. It's harder to just jump in and become a champion. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's true. And same thing for Andrade. Like people are like, look, he came over. This is what he's doing. I'm like, bro, Trips had all this shit planned like a year ago. So even though you sign and they do vignettes and you're debuted, like they're just keeping him around until the new plans come up and they make them fit him in. But that's going to be anyone from now on, unless your name is Braun Breaker and they just start ripping shit up because you're just undeniable. But yeah. until then, the, it's everything's planned out for so long. The wheels are in motion. You, you think the Sami Zayn stuff with Chad Gable was planned two months before WrestleMania. And they did a whole Rocky thing and Chad was training him. And it's led us through the middle of the summer. It's just not places for people to squeeze in. They threw his ass into the LWO for you. And really, they just teased it. Tease, tease, tease. Stay on television. Tease. One match. Stay on television. Get in there with Dom. You know, make... Okay, we'll throw you into this match. And they're just trying to keep him around. But stuff was so settled that it, it's hard to do that. Unless injury yeah. pops up and they can fit your ass in somewhere. I don't think there's anywhere for Andrade to go. I think there's there's nowhere. I think he's he's in an unfortunate position where... I don't know what he thought he was in AEW. He's the same thing in WWE. He's not a main event guy. He's yeah. not a championship guy. He's not terribly charismatic. He's There's so many things working against him. Not that he's not a good wrestler, but the ceiling's low for Andrade. It always was. Like Andrade with Zelina Vega, it's a lot higher. I don't think it's that much higher. I, don't, oh, I really don't. I don't see where he goes on this roster that is any different than where he was at. If, if you were to play this podcast about seven years ago, they put him in the fucking male stripper gimmick. Yes. And that was and he had to think it was horrible. But that's when they signed him. It was La Sombra and they took off the mask. And like, mm. They took off the mask. And then he had the top hat and male stripper gimmick. You were like, yeah, it may be over for Andrade. I don't know where he goes. And then they gave him Zelina and then blink. And he's NXT champion a year and a half later. But we said the same exact things about this same exact guy seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, but it's different Dre, now. The because same thing, and they gave no, him one mouthpiece, here, and it was here, to the here's moon. Why, here's why it's different. One, you blinked and he was champion, then you blinked again and he wasn't. So That's let's start true. there. That's true. I Two, mean, he was called up, and he had a Rey Mysterio, and he had some good matches. I'm just saying, like, but but it there was never any sustainability to that gimmick. There, there wasn't. And there isn't any... There, the point the point I'm making is like you look at this roster and forget booking out very far. Who do you elevate him ahead of? Like there's really nowhere for him to go. Like he's not he doesn't stick out like a Braun Breaker. He doesn't stick out like a Dragonov. Who yeah, I'm even concerned Dragonov doesn't get that far. Like Andrade is, I'm not saying he's Ricochet because he's not he's not as good in ring as Ricochet. So you're looking at a guy who was pissed off his position in AEW and came to WWE and is going to be doing the same shit. Some people are just going to be what they are. Some people are just going to be mid car guys. And you don't got to accept that and you'd be pissed about that. But sometimes you just, you it, are what you are. It is what it is. The, the rosters are too stacked. They're but again, stacked. I would have said the same thing about Damian Priest. Now, nah, see, I think Damian Priest was different because. Like Damian Priest was not Andrade in NXT or when he got called up. No, but I think the thing about Damian Priest was the WWE mold fit him better than what he was on the indie scene, right? Like, and I said that from the beginning. I was like, yeah, he's kind of he's a more of a WWE guy than an NXT guy. And Edge losing Judgment Day for whatever reasons that Edge has been talking about opened the door for Damian Priest to become Damian Priest because the one thing Damian Priest has that Andrade doesn't is size and a look. I'm trying. He doesn't have those things. He got like, size. That motherfucker's big now. But. Nah, but he's he's not like again. Walk through the airport. Who the fuck is that guy? Big. Damian Priest is that. And then when Damian Priest works, he can do things athletically that other people can't do. The only thing he had to work on was charisma, mm -hmm. and now he's got it, right? And even now, it's just people like ah, he's a transitional champ, which we're about to talk about with Clash of the Castle. What could possibly happen here? But Andrade just doesn't have those things. Give him the mask back. 
<laughs> Even if you do, he's just another mass wrestler. Like it's just there is there's just sometimes there's nowhere for you to go. There's nowhere, and it's not it's not a knock on you as a talent. You could be a very it's like Roosh and AEW. There's no the ceiling ain't that high for Roosh. Yeah, it's just not. He's gonna give you some good matches. That's cool. But if Roosh is expecting to be AEW champion, get the fuck out of here. So that that's just the way it works with some of these guys. No, yeah, I, it's I get, it. and it's it's hard to swallow though. Like those guys want to be the guy. Everybody wants been, to be the guy. They want to, and they've been the guy somewhere before. Well, that's like, the, why can't I do it here? And it's just like I don't that's know. That's the like, problem, the right? The problem is when wrestling was at its biggest boon in terms of right before AEW hit. Yeah, when the super indies like where everybody was working, and everybody was championing every independent promotion, Progress, PWG, Ring of Honor, New Japan. Right. The talent pool was so deep that they got the WWE got a chance to pull from an AEW created an entire fucking company out of. Yeah. Right. That once you sign all these people, let's take the wrestlers out of it for a minute. As fans, we're programmed to think. Oh, he was a champion there. He should be a champion here. Be here. Yeah, he's the main guy. He was the main guy. It's like there's a lot of different places. But this is college hoops when you go pro. You ain't some of you motherfuckers are gonna come off the bench because you in the wrong system. Yeah, that's how it works. Like, hey man, you got drafted. Like, look, like you man, dropped twenty. I get it. You were dropping twenty, twenty-two. You might be a, a an eight and eight guy for us. Look, Trajan Langley was the shit in Duke. He came to the NBA. There was nowhere for him to go. Yeah. Other players like a JJ Reddick, they found a system where it worked. Right, like Carlos Boozer, like some people overachieve, like the, some people underachieve. It's just the nature of the beast because when you take the best and you put them all under one roof, yeah, fans start to, to sink or swim. Yeah. yeah, fans go, he should be champion. He should be yeah. champion. Why is AEW signing all these people? Ah, oh, they're just gonna put him in the mid card. What the fuck else are you gonna put him? I got like ten champions. You know what? I'm okay with that. Sometimes you collect the pieces, you collect the best, and you let the crowd decide. Like what? sometimes preconceived notions of, oh, I got to sign this guy. I got to push him. I got to sign this guy. I got to push. Him. No, we'll sign you. And all you can promise is that we'll put you in front of the crowd. Now who the crowd latches onto the best is going to be the guys who get pushed to the top. Well, I mean, my, my thing is, are always, you over? Or are you not over? My, my thing is always, I mean, you know, you can go back to the indie company where you're a champ and be broke. Right. Yeah. Or you can come here and make a lot of money and then you can work your way through the system. But you're playing with the best in the world, right? It's like you're not playing with okay wrestlers. These are the best wrestlers in the world. Now, on the flip side of it, you're in an Andrade, and you're like, I was a Flambra, and I was this, and I was this. And, like, Tony Khan and Triple H are like, dog, I, I get it. I agree with you. You were great as a Sombra, but yeah. look at that guy. Why we signed you. Back. Yeah, we signed you. We signed you for that, but look at Braun Breaker. Yeah. Like, look how fast he's moving. Like, just, Look at Ilya Dragunov. Like, you're not Gunther. You're not no. that guy. And and it took Gunther a while to break through. Like, well, Vince was trying to marry. He, he was held yeah. back by Vince. So it, it, but it's one of those things, like, presentation-wise, where it's like, oh, I don't really understand. It's like, you got to go and make it up. You got to get over. L.A. Knight. My man was Maxine male model. That's what I'm saying. Like, and, but he's like, give me my name back. And people thought L.A. Knight was a stupid fucking name. It was Coming from name. Eli Drake. No, it works. He made it work. Yeah, like it some, got it over and shit's great. Some people get it. Some it people can't figure it out. Name. It was a stupid <laughs> fucking name. And I was like, I, it was, but he made it work. Yeah. And I don't think anybody, and that's Hunter included, knew that guy was going to be that over. No. Right? Like he showed up and the, the Maximum Male modeled him for a minute. And then they gave him his name back. And it's like, all right, cool. Let's, let's try him out here and see what happens. And then you see the crowd to connect. And then as a, as a booker, you got to go, all right, we got to start rethinking our plans. So. Yeah. Right. And again, you go back to somebody like Andrade, who you sign, it's like, well, what do you want? Well, I want to be champ. It's like, there ain't no room for that shit. You're going to be okay working this mid car for a while. Yeah. yeah. And get over. And if you're over enough, you'll find your way there. And if That's you can't, okay. it, it, here, you take the check. So, yeah. so I say this to say when I, when I'll go and I look at people talking about Ricky Starks and I, I see people talking about, Oh, um, Will Ospreay should have signed with WWE. No, you sign with what fits. Yep. Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's not because depending on the plans, there's nothing you can control. Fans are going to try to pick their favorites, but there's a lot of factors. There's politics backstage. There's just a lot of things involved you got to deal with to get over. And everybody's going to think 
the grass is greener on the other side. It ain't. No, it ain't. Unless you are real, unless you're Cody Rose, unless you're Ricochet going to AW, which I don't think you can miss with. It's like, or you're like an Adam Copeland who comes over and is yeah. like, I've been doing this for years. And they're just like, all right, fine. You get to do what you, kind of what you want. Have fun. That works for you. So it's unless you're one of those, the expectation is to be like a champ or the number one guy on the roster. People got to chill out. Exactly. Let's go through Clash of the Castle real quick then. Uh, Bianca and Jade versus Alba Fire, uh, Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark. They're having a, they're gonna have a really hard time keeping the tag titles on these women because now you just you're feeding them two teams now. Yeah, right. Like they're running you know, through teams quickly. Yeah, like if I think the mistake here was Isla Dawn Alba Fire, give Kaylee Ray her name back for one, but for two, I like their name. It's all right. You, what you could have done is heated them up right as a tag team have them beat up other teams to the point where a match between them and jade and bianca makes sense and there is a threat to beat them right now you're just throwing an ice cold team in here with another just kind of throwing together team and saying hey it's a triple threat now the odds are stacked against you dog we know jade and bianca are gonna win like what are we doing no agreed but i you know them jumping them and everything they got to build the tag team division for a credible team eventually to beat them, or it's going to be dysfunction that a random team is going to beat them. But you don't want to do that. You want the team to beat them to get some sort of a rub off of beating them. Yeah, well. Right now, I just, I don't know which team that is. And then um, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable. Otis is finally going to beat the shit out of Chad Gable. We hope so. They might be holding this till SummerSlam. Maybe. Or Money in the Bank. Yeah, Money in the Bank is next. Maybe. No, Otis is going to beat the hell out of him. And then Gable is going to have to figure out how to get some more muscle. And to I mean, Creed brothers. it's going to be the Creed brothers. I, Chad Gable is a perfect example of a guy who was fucking stuck in obscurity. Just like, waited it out. And like we had, did great. Shoosh. Like every, yeah. everything he does is gold. He was like, let me take whatever, I, whatever you give me, I'm going to make it gold. Right, except for Shorty G, that was fucking impossible. Yeah, he was like, shout, out to my, shout out to Big E. I don't know if anybody watched the pre show for the was it the Saudi Arabia card yep. when he was like, If I was saddled with a gimmick like Shorty G, I'd be mad too. That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's right, but Chad Gable's eventually gonna beat Sammy Zane, and I think Sammy wants that yeah. more than anybody else. I think Sammy is one of those selfish dudes, like, we're gonna put the title on this guy at some point, but let's build it. Until it's dire straits and it feels like he can't win it, and then he finally goes over, and then he's the Intercontinental Champion, but it won't be here. No, I, I agree. Maybe they do drag it out then, but yeah, I, I'm just ready to see the Creeds join him and him go full Me heel too. Gable. Me too. And then Bailey versus Piper Niven. I'm here for the Piper Niven pop. That's all I want to see when Piper walks out in front of she's home. Scotland. Yeah, yep. That's she's all home. I care about. Oh she's, yeah. No chance of winning this match. No. no. Selena Vega had no chance in Puerto Rico, but none of that matters. The pop was incredible. Made yep. her career. That's all I care about. All I care about. But yes, Bailey's going over. Duh. Yeah, hundred percent. And then Cody Rhodes, AJ Styles, I quit match. Um, it's interesting. Is do, this do is, baby faces win I quit matches? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, I guess Cody's not losing. The I quit stipulation is an interesting one because these two are fully capable of having a five star match, right? Sure. Them, AJ has them. Cody does not. I'm, I'm just saying. You put it. AJ Styles is one of the best wrestlers of our generation. Like, period. Right? He's now the most underrated wrestler of our generation. He was underrated at TNA. Went became the best wrestler in the world for a good stint in New Japan and then early WWE and then now. Because of Osprey, because of Danielson coming back, because of you know Okada and Omega, and then it's like people completely forgot about AJ Styles again, and he's super underrated. He's yeah. He, I mean, look, man, I, I've been following AJ since NWA and TNA. He's one of the greatest wrestling wrestlers on this planet. He has been. He's he's older now. He's not going to do the same things that he used to, but. The, he can he's one of those guys that can wrestle a broom to a five-star match like he he delivered john cena five three of the greatest matches that Cena ever had 
Yes. Right. In Vince's system, which says a lot. And in this particular feud, this, it, this is, I think this match can del- just absolutely deliver. Now, th- th- this is really about Drew McIntyre and D- Damian Priest, but these two, I just, the, my only question is, what, how do we get to this I quit part? Like, what is it that makes AJ tap out? Right. I got to know what it is. AJ is fully capable of tapping out as a heel. I don't think it does anything. Like, he's in a spot where if he loses, nobody cares. I just want to know how do we get to that point. But um, I'm invested in this match. The Styles clash off the stairs was incredible. Oh, when yeah. they turned on Cody. Like, he just, AJ's just so good, man. He's, he's just so, he's so good. And yet, you're right. I think he's underrated all over again. Because this, this should be the y'all must have forgot match. Yeah. Yeah. Just AJ's one of those, like, yo. If this is my swan song, the beginning of it, in the last year, two of my career, let me have a banger. Like, let, let me have a match. Trips will give him time. There's only five matches on this card. Yep. Like, yo, what do you want? Do do your thing. Knock yourselves out. Cody will bleed, by the yeah. way. Uh, Damian Priest, Drew McIntyre in the main event. Man. You know, from, from Mania season, I said Drew's winning this belt. Scott, Clash of Castle, Scott, Drew's winning, Drew's winning, Drew's winning. I'm no longer sure. I'm not either. <laughs> like, he should win. But CM Punk screwing him over or Drew always getting close, even when he won, and shit just going wrong for him is kind of a better story in gimmick. Yeah. It's a, uh, you're in a situation where you've got Damian Priest as the champion. And he's, doing he's a good been job. he's been better than I thought he was going to be. Honestly. Yeah, he's he's doing a, he's not like knocking it out of the park good. Like he's not Cody, but he's good. Yeah. And you got this Drew McIntyre thing now. Obviously, everything changed when Punk got hurt, right? WrestleMania main event changed. Everything changed. And now you have this story of him and Drew that has been festering for all this time. And I think the decision just has to be made is like, does it really need to be for the title? No. All right. Then Drew doesn't need to win here. If the plan all along is to put the title on Punk, well, then Drew's got to win the title. Yeah. I don't think right now, in my, the way I'm looking at this situation right now is money in the bank is next month. Whoever wins that is going to be the person that beats Damian Priest. That's what I'm thinking. I could be totally wrong here. So I think Punk shows up in Scotland, fucks with Drew again. This, <laughs> this gets to a, a real point. Yeah, he like cost this, him in his home, Drake. There's no coming back. I got to whoop your ass, Punk. But I think that's where they're going to get to because whatever it is, um, like when I saw Punk, he didn't have his arm brace on, none of that shit. He's, he seems like he's getting healthy. Whatever it is at SummerSlam is going to be a straight up blood feud. No need for a title. And I think it'll be great. I think these two could have a few that it lasts several months. Priest doesn't need to be involved in that shit. The, the only question for Priest is, what are you at this point? Drew's a heel. There is no question that Drew McIntyre is a heel. Damian Priest is a heel. He's here, I say heel compared to how Drew's a heel. Yeah. Damian's like, yeah, well, he's a heel, kind of. Because yep. maybe? I don't know. So I think Punk screws Drew once again. Priest retains, and then we wait until Money in the Bank to start figuring out who gets the title off of Priest. That's what I'm thinking. I think we're leaning towards that because Drew winning it in his hometown is fun and it's a pop, but Drew's a heel still. And Punk costing Drew, not only at Mania, but in front of all his friends, all his family, is what creates a blood feud. Yeah. That's what sends shit over the top. Now, Punk, you must die. And if Punk is ready any time around SummerSlam or shortly thereafter, this feud's going to be a banger. And boy, if Punk fucks, fucks with Drew here, the heat he's going to get is nuclear. <laughs> it's going to be like uh, the Brett and Shaw thing yeah. where Drew's going to be the babyface just overseas and Punk's going to get booed out of a building like when Shaw went to Canada. Yep. But you come back and it, it flips. But yeah, now Punk's getting booed. And they love Punk over there. getting booed out of building. Punk's with Drew. Yeah, he's going to ruin this. So that's, yeah, that is my prediction for that match. Man, it, we'll see how it all plays out, though. So much going on in pro wrestling. Next week, we'll get to AEW and see what they have going on before Forbidden Door. 
recap some of this stuff. So we're we're back. We're back in the in the groove. On next week, it'll be me and producer Cole, baby, because the old man will be in Aruba. Well deserved yeah. vacation. Um, but no, we'll we'll recap all that. More pro wrestling next week for sure. Make sure you guys check out our Patreon episode. Like Dre said, gonna be good, good convo on that episode. And then yeah, we're gonna we're waiting to see what the hell happens with boxing MMA. If we're at a standstill with both, we might combine both shows into one. So it might be one, you know, combat show for the weekend. If some wild shit happens, like a Conor McGregor news or Javante Davis goes crazy or Lord knows anything with Ryan Garcia, then maybe we'll have to do two separate shows. But we're playing that one by ear. Make sure you guys check that one out as well. But for now, thank you all. Support us on Patreon. Like, subscribe, wherever you guys listen to podcasts. Check us out on YouTube as well. For myself, for the old man, Andres Helm. Until next time, we're out. Peace.